Renaults, like most French cars of a certain age, used to have an element of je ne sais quoi, that love it or hate it quirkiness that left you in no doubt where they came from. The Renault 4 vintage 1961 was no exception. A rather belated response to Citroen's 2CV, from its minimalist styling to the seats you could take out for a picnic, it had charm derived from ruthless practicality. A charm which was reflected in the commercials. Eight million of the car the French call the Catrelle have been sold. Alas, production has just ended, and with it, one might think, comes the end of an era of characterful Renaults. It's not that the Clio, the 19 and the Safran aren't perfectly good cars, it's just that they're a bit in the Euro box mold. But there is something of a renaissance going on. This is Renault's new Twingo, a car with a face and Renault Hope a personality. A car they'll think you buy because it dares to be different. It first appeared at the Paris Motor Show last autumn and caused a bit of a riot. No one believed a major car manufacturer would risk coming up with something a little out of the ordinary. Since it went on sale here in France last month, it's been doing a roaring trade. People seem to like the one-box shape and the designer details, such as the headlights which resemble frogs' eyes. No pun intended. Then there's the trendy bonnet scoops and the single oversized windscreen wiper that looks like something off a truck. And at the back, the cute round indicator lights. Nothing is quite where you'd expect to find it. For example, you don't normally find a, an aerial growing out of a wing mirror. And the door handles are remarkably like flying saucers. Inside, there's no shortage of humour either, starting with these rather frantic, brightly covered seats. No chance of falling asleep here. But one of the first things you notice when you get in the car is the green Lego factor. Everything's colour-coordinated, knobs, buttons, you name it, apart from the hazard warning lights, operated by this rather curious red ping-pong ball. Rather disappointing there is the lack of space for all the maps and bits and pieces you need when you're driving along. For example, there's no glove compartment, just a rather perfunctory shelf. One of the strangest things about the car as you're sitting at the wheel, though, is that the speedo is in the middle of the dashboard. It's digital and it doesn't give you a lot of extra information, but more importantly than that, it's actually quite difficult to see when the sun's shining. In front of the driver is this black hole which contains the various warning lights. Getting into the back is easy with these very wide doors, and once you're safely installed, you can actually move the seat backwards and forwards. Now, I know you've seen that before with the Citroen ZX, but there's a much greater range of movement in the Twingo. In fact, there's plenty of lounging room. But the cost of all that is not an awful lot of boot space. easy to drive, easy to see out of, and there's plenty of power so you don't have to zip up and down the gears too much as you're nipping in and out of the traffic. There's no power steering, but then the steering's pretty light anyway. Renault decided to build just one basic model, and that does mean you don't get any extras. So, for example, you don't have the option of electric windows, central locking, a knob to adjust the passenger's wing mirror, and you don't even get an intermittent wiper. But having said all that, it's just a great, fun car to drive, and it really has got a lot of style. Leave the town for the open road, and you'll notice a distinct lack of oomph. The 1.2-litre engine hasn't come from the Clio, but from the old Renault 5. And on the auto route, if you find a hill, you'll end up having to change gear. And as your revs rise, so will your voice if you're trying to communicate with your passenger, because this car is noisy. Having said that, around corners and on bumpy roads, it really comes into its element. A car that should be driven with a certain amount of verve, I think. Six and a half thousand pounds, which isn't bad when you think it's the same cost of a basic Fiesta or Corsa. There's only one big problem. As part of their cost-cutting exercise, 
Renault have decided to engineer only left-hand drive Twingos. And they've no plans as yet, and certainly not for another 18 months, to produce right-hand drive Twingos, which I, for one, think's a pity.